Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. So we are continuing our dental anatomy sessions. So last two sessions was about maxillary central and lateral incisor. Next we have maxillary canine. So canines, as we all know, they are very long and stable teeth. There are four canines, that is uh, two maxillary and two mandibular canines. So now we are focusing only on maxillary canine. So next video will be about the mandibular canine because uh, many features are common in both so it's better to study mandibular canine after maxillary canine then we'll start with the premolars of maxilla so this canine is commonly known as corner stones of dentition because it is placed at corner of mouth and it has single pointed cusp so it is also known as cuspids because it has got a single pointed cusp. So the canine's role in mastication is mainly tearing which is intermediate between the incisor, uh, the incising action of our anterior teeth and the grinding action of our posterior teeth. See how well balanced our dentition is. The anterior teeth is incising, posterior teeth is grinding, and the canine is tearing. So, its position, as you see picture here, on the mesial side it has lateral incisor, and distal side it has maxillary first premolar. Now the tooth numbering systems. So similar to the last two videos we going in the same pattern the universal system it is starting from 1 and it is ending 32 here okay so the canines upper canines are right upper canine is 6 and the left upper canine is 11 okay 6 and 11 whereas the Zygmunt uh, Palmer system which is a quadrant one either right canine this is left canine so the mandibular canine will be like this and FTA system is 1 3 and 2 3 the 1 and 2 are quadrant and 3 is the tooth number okay so that is the tooth numbering system now we have the chronology the first evidence of calcification is at four to five months then we have the enamel completion by 6 to 7 years, then eruption by 11 to 12 years, and finally the root completion by 13 to 15 years. Okay. And the dimension the crown length is 10, root length is very long, 17, mesiodistal diameter at contact area is 7.5, and cervical line is 5.5, the labiolingual diameter is 8 and cervical line is 7 and curvature of cervical line mesial is 2.5 and distal is 1.5 so always mesial will be more deeper than distal so that is how you can easily differentiate the right and left canine when for practical examination they will keep specimens such as right and left canine you need to exactly identify the tooth whether it is right or left so always make sure that the mesial part is more deeper than the distal part now we'll start with the labial aspect so the labial aspect the crown of maxillary canine is narrower mesiodistally than the maxillary central incisor so it has got two slopes that is a cusp ridges that is a mesial slope and the distal slope mesial slope is being shorter than the distal slope the labial surface is smooth and bulky in the middle because of this labial ridge and we have the imprecation lines uh, which can often be found in the cervical third which is known as lines of pickerel p i c k e r e double l the mesial outline usually convex and rounded uh, mesio incisal ankle the mesial incisal ankle is rounded 
and the height of contour at the contact area that is the junction of incisal and middle third the distal margin which is shorter than the mesial margin and has a more rounded incisal angle height of contour at the middle third and the incisal margin which is divided into two components by the tip of cusp which are known as mesial incisal and distal incisal slope or also known as mesial mesial cusp ridge and distal cusp ridge so you can see the picture all the parts labial ridge distal cusp ridge the cusp tip mesial cusp ridge so the labial surface is convex in all direction but the curvature is more pronounced mesial distally and the shape in general the shape is pentagonal and the incisal aspect which has a large cusp with a pointed cusp tip now let's see the lingual aspect in lingual aspect the crown and root are narrower lingually and cingulum is well developed large and sometimes pointed like a cusp whereas the cervical line which curves asymmetrically towards the apex with a slight uh, offset to the distal and a well developed lingual ridge is seen uh, which divides the mesial and distal lingual fossa so you can see all the parts that is the cervical line cingulum mesial marginal ridge distal marginal ridge distal lingual fossa mesial lingual fossa uh, mesial cuspal ridge and distal cuspal ridge now we have the mesial aspect so from mesial aspect canine looks similar uh, but bulkier than the maxillary central incisor so this maxillary canine is widest anterior tooth labio lingually okay and the cervical line curvature is to wide uh, towards the incisal and the contact area is near the junction of incisal and middle third and distal aspect which is almost same as mesial surface and the cervical line which exhibits less curvature okay so always the mesial side has more depth than the distal side and the distal surface is generally smaller with a uh, resultant shorter labial and lingual margins and the height of contour is located at a more cervical level and the contact area is near in the middle third so always the contact area on the mesial side is towards the incisal and distal side is towards the apical uh, towards the cervical sorry the last uh, aspect is the incisal aspect so as you see the picture the labiolingual dimension is greater than the mesio distal dimension and the maxillary canine is generally convex so this is the highest labiolingual dimension tooth and this is generally convex in both its labial and lingual outlines and the cusp tip is labial to the center of the crown labiolingually and mesial to the center mesio distally so that is about the cusp tip how it is positioned okay it is center of the crown labial to the center of the crown labial lingually and mesial to the center mesial distally so the labial ridge and the cingulum are very uh, noticeable from this aspect regarding the root which is a uh, uh, longest and strongest of all the teeth in the mouth and mesial and distal surface of root have developmental depressions from all aspect the root tapers gradually to a sharp or slightly blunted apex so wider labial lingually than mesial distally lingual and labial surfaces are convex okay so that's all about maxillary canine so very commonly asked essay question so just like i said previous sessions we need to draw all the aspects with the measurement and explain point wise so you need to follow that exact steps the tooth numbering system its dimensions and its chronology then the five aspects with picture Okay so I'll come up with mandibular canine in my next session thank you